So last year, about the same time, there was also lots of little jackal pups. So it's nice to see that it's happening again this year. It'll take a little bit of time for them to grow, and then they generally stay in the area of the den site for quite a number of months. And then at around 10 months or so, they will sort of disperse and then go and try and find their own little territories. Jackals, they do form monogamous pairs, and they are highly territorial over their particular areas. But their territories aren't very big, especially when there's a high concentration of jackals. Well, Picasso, um, the jackals cope with mange, as do any of the animals. You know, it's uh, very often when they're not in very good condition that they fall foul to uh, mange. It's normally when it's very dry as well. So they're very often full of ticks, parasites, and then mange can take hold. Um, and uh, it, it's just almost a matter of improving their condition, which then helps their natural immunity fight the mange. Um, but it can also result in their death eventually. Sometimes it's uh, very difficult for them to shake it off. But like I say, it's, it's all sort of down to their health and the condition of the, of the individual animal. It can also pass between them. Um, but uh, more prevalent, I would say, with jackals is uh, probably rabies. Um, and they are very big carriers of that. Oh, there's another little one. Fabulous. So now we have two. Nice and fluffy. They also look nice and fat as well. Uh, it looks like uh, they've been feeding and their parents are um, looking after them. So, having just left the little jackal den site, I'm definitely going to go back there and spend some more time with them on uh, future drives. But now we've headed up back slightly out of the river basin, and we're going to head up the road called Dairy shortly, and onto the ridge line once more. But uh, now stopping with this beautiful light on these stunning impala. This female here, just look at her, she's in excellent condition. And the coat shining in the sun. And the two youngster males just having a little bit of a an argy bargy. These two they seem to be a little bit concerned. Well, maybe not so much. But impala are always on their toes, as are all antelope, because uh, that's their foot structure. But very alert always are impala, looking out, listening out, smelling out for predators. Like a male, also in fantastic condition. And beautiful counter shading on their coats. Dark on top, leading to a lighter tawny color, and then white on their bellies. Kind of like fish in the water. Makes them blend in if you look at them from the top, as well as, uh, yeah, not really predators looking at them from below. But it does help them blend in. Well, this is just so special, everybody. I hope you are all enjoying this at home as much as I am.
there it is, the finished product. It's still a bit light for us to be able to see the light inside the pumpkin. But what do you reckon? For my first try ever at fashioning some kind of Halloween monster, what do you guys reckon? With those acacia teeth, I think it's looking pretty gnarly. Don't you, Morgan? Incredible. Yeah, that's the way we roll. Well, Pumpkin's holding on for dear life there on the plank in front of Rusty this afternoon. We are still waiting for this rain to subside a little bit. I can see a little bit further it started easing up, but while it was raining, I did have time to finish off my Jack O'Lantern. Yeah, this I think is to be dead honest with you, this is the second time in my life I've made a Jack O'Lantern. And I think this is probably the best time it's ever like the best one it's yeah, I broke the nose a little bit, but it's fine. Me and him got something in common. What a cool thing to do. Dina, you've said thank you very much for making it a very enjoyable Halloween. Well, I am glad that uh, hopefully we put a smile on your dial and maybe even made a few of you a bit on the scared side. Who knows? Uh, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. We don't get to really dress up. It's not necessarily a holiday that is celebrated extensively throughout South Africa. Nowadays, th thanks to san uh, social media and all the trends, everybody wants to do it. But I don't know. I've never been trick-or-treating before. Can you believe it? It would have been nice to have gone home today and I would have run around and knocked on everybody's door in the Hoodspread Wildlife Estate going, treats. I wouldn't have said trick. Just treats please for me but anyways it has been a lot of fun thank you Gabe for roughing it out in the rain today and Ralph for everything that you have done in the Eastern Cape showing the Bushman's River that's now starting to flow well a tributary at least that is uh, starting to flow and uh, hopefully Andrew and who's with Andrew Cameron are nice and warm in their tents but remember we're going to be doing a fireside chat uh, for all the explorers a little bit later uh, so make sure you hang around and uh, stay in touch for that but it has been a truly spectacular day I've had a lot of fun in here and uh, well we'll see you a little bit later I'm still really disappointed in everybody for not voting for my pumpkin but I've got 365 days of course to practice <laughs>